Most of us have seen streets like this one in our towns and suburbs. And most of us have gone to a neighborhood restaurant, just as Jack and his sister Louise are doing. A restaurant is part of everyday American life. But what are the things that make up American life? Looking at her menu, Louise has found a word that doesn't seem American at all. The word is... Well, Jack knows that's a French word meaning slice. And there are other French words here. The word menu, for instance, as well as casserole, omelet, and mayonnaise. And the word restaurant, too. But how have French words become part of our language? They are part of the influence that we have inherited from France. Let's go back to 1534. In that year, a Frenchman named Jacques Cartier reached North America, the gulf that he named the St. Lawrence. Cartier landed here, in what is now Canada, and he claimed this region for France. The early French explorers found St. Lawrence was a great river highway leading into the heart of the continent. Along this ruins was first carried into North America. Among the first settlements was in Montreal. Quebec, the first permanent French settlement, was founded by Samuel Plain. He was one of the first of the great French explorers in North America. The early French settlements founded by Champlain and others were wooden forts built for protection against hostile Indians. These early forts with their trading posts, were the first centers of French influence in America. And one of the earliest influences was that of religion. French missionaries built chapels and converted many Indians to their faith. Among the many churches built by French missionaries is this one in Quebec. Built in 1688, it is one of the oldest buildings of French origin in North America. And the street on which it stands is one of the oldest in the New World. Here, some of the houses were built in the same way that people had built them in France, with narrow windows and shutters. The old part of Quebec has much of the flavor of an old village in France, including the French type of carriage. Modern Quebec continues to be a center of French influence in North America. Here, the French language is still widely spoken, for many of these people are descendants of early French colonists. And many of the names in Quebec can be traced back to family names brought from France. From Quebec, French life was carried westward into the continent, so that today we find French influence in American towns almost everywhere. You can find it in your own town if you look carefully. But let's go back to see how French influence spread. Father Marquette, a Jesuit priest, and Louis Lier, a fur trader, were two explorers who traveled from Quebec into the Mississippi Valley, exploring the region and converting Indians. Traveling by way of the St. Lawrence, the Great Lakes, and the Mississippi, Marquette and Joliet entered the heart of the Mississippi Valley. Marquette and Joliet traveled by canoe, as did many of the early French explorers. Following the same water route, other French explorers entered the vast new lands of the Mississippi Valley. And wherever the French went, they planted the outposts of their culture, chapels for their religion, trading posts, for the fur trade, and forts for the defense of their new lands. This French fort oh, reminds us of the time when all the Mississippi Valley belonged to France. From such settlements grew many cities in the Middle West. Vincennes, Indiana, for instance, still shows its French history in its cathedral, built in a French style of architecture. We can find the influence of the French not only in Vincennes, but in names of many other places, Montpelier, Detroit, 
La Crosse, Dubuque, St. Louis, Baton Rouge. Today, these names and many others are a familiar part of American life. Familiar, too, are many French words that all of us know and use. Beret, for instance, is the French name for this kind of cap. Sedan, our word for a certain kind of car, can be traced to France. Bart is a French word meaning a broad avenue. There are many such French words which Jack and Louise and all of us use as part of our language. We often meet French words in our reading. Here's one, for instance, premier, a prime minister. Here's another, bayou. This is a word which the French settlers gave to the swampy streams or inlets they found in Louisiana. The story of Louisiana is also the story of the French explorer Robert de La Salle. He too helped build the French Empire in the New World. Following the explorations of Marquette and Joliet, La Salle continued down the Mississippi until he reached its mouth. He claimed all the valley for France. He named it Louisiana for his monarch, King Louis XIV of France. New Orleans, founded in 1718, was the capital of this vast territory. French influence in New Orleans is still very strong. In this city and in the region around, we can find some of the best examples of the French way of life. One example we can find is the parish system of local governments, still used throughout Louisiana. Under this system, which came from France, each parish corresponds to a county. The flavor of French life is strongest in the old section of New Orleans. The cathedral here in the section of New Orleans still called the French Quarter, we can find French influences similar to those we saw in Quebec. In New Orleans, as in Quebec, we find the French style carriages on the old streets. Along the streets, too, are homes like those the early citizens had known in France. Balcony styles of these French homes can be found in some of our homes today. Outside New Orleans, we'll find French plantation houses, beautiful mansions that were once the homes of French planters in Louisiana. Some of the features of this kind of house today not only in Louisiana, but in American towns everywhere, we can find French styles in houses. This style is called French Provincial. This house has the slate roof and round tower of a French chateau. We can find examples of French influence inside our homes too. Perhaps in your own home, as in this one, there are pieces of furniture that are French in design. This desk is made in a French style. The print on the wall is a reproduction of a French painting. And perhaps in the book that Jack is reading, there is the influence of French history, French literature, French language. You too can find many examples of French influence in your everyday life. Lush influences in religion in architecture, in dress, in names of places, in the language we read and speak every day. These are some of the kinds of influences that have come to us from France and have become part of our everyday life.